Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of D&D Horror Stories with D&D Doge. In today's episode, we have a tale of one of the curses that can plague every DM, the ability to find good players. A story about a player that gets a bit too upset over losing 5 gold pieces, and much more. But first, you know the drill by now, Ziggy has something to ask. Thanks, Ziggy. Now let's get right into these stories. My Luck in Finding Players 4 in 1 Story by Reddit user Too Fast Too Furious123. So, I recently lost one player from my game, and I was trying to fill the gap with a new player, but this didn't go too well. All these stories here were too short to make a separate post about any of them, so I put them all together. Player 1. The Dragon That is quite a short story. This player created a character that would literally be a dragon. A large and strong dragon who could also take the form of a human, so that he could travel with the party. It was, of course, an idea that I couldn't agree on, but I figured that instead of simply denying it, we could somehow make it fit into the story. Okay, maybe his character would actually be a dragon stuck in human form because of insert story reason. Thanks to that, he would have a motive to travel with the party, and maybe it would develop an interesting story. I presented this idea to the player, but no. He said that he did not like it. He must be able to turn into a dragon. Fly, breathe fire, etc. When I refused, he started whining about how bad of a DM I was, and so on. So, I just blocked him. Player 2. The Little Girl This is an even shorter story. This guy wanted to play as a 13 years old little girl. I said hell no to this, and explained to him that his character was way too young. He accepted it, and said that he could make his character a bit older, like 14 or maybe even 15. Yeah, let's just say he didn't make it to his first session. Player 3. The one with no reason to follow the party. This one is pretty self-explanatory. I specifically asked all the players to make a backstory that was at least a bit connected to the main plot, or at least gives them a reason to follow the plot. This guy's backstory was anything but that. But okay, I gave him the benefit of the doubt, and at his first session, he decided that his character would have no reason to follow the party, and that the party had no reason to drag him with them. Me, having a zero-tolerance policy for the I have no reason to follow the party, decided that, okay, his character is left behind, and now he has to make a new one. No joke, there is no coming back from that. He was trying to argue, but I said that I don't care, and I don't want to hear his excuses. He knew that I had zero tolerance for that, and I deleted his character from my Discord chat. He left soon after. Player 4. The Dragon Slayer this guy probably didn't even read the lore of my world, because despite the lore stating that there were no dragons for the last few thousand years, he is coming from a family with a long-time tradition of killing dragons, and he was basically a dragon slayer with a sword and armor made of dragon scales, yada yada yada. I explained to him that his family could not exist like this, because there were no dragons for so long. He insisted that I should change the lore of my world to fit his backstory even though it would kind of ruin the whole story. He promised that he would make a new character, but he was away from keyboard on the server for like two weeks, and wasn't even responding to my texts, so I kind of removed him. So yeah, so far it's going so well. Yeah, I would say that is some pretty rough luck right there. Player 1 didn't want to be anything except an OP character that could do everything, and when OP even tried to compromise, it wasn't good enough. Player 2 just wanted to probably play a young female character for creepy reasons, so that would be a hard pass. Then there's Player 3. I just don't get people like Player 3. Why even join a game if you're going to make a character that wouldn't have a reason to join the party? That never makes any sense to me. And finally, Player 4. Wanting a DM to completely change the world they created, just so they can fit the character that they wrote, and obviously without reading the lore. 
goes way beyond being self-entitled. It sounds pretty rough, OP, but hopefully you will find a perfect player for your game soon. All you can do is keep at it. Let's move on. Player quits campaign over 2 gold piece plus 5 silver piece fine for sticking his finger in a dead NPC's empty eye socket in front of town guards. By Reddit user Char240. This happened in our second session, but it carried over into our third because I ended the session on it. I'm running a rather raw campaign in a homebrew world I'm creating for a group of players who are all new to D&D, and it's my first time playing as a DM or player. One of my NPCs that the party had taken to a local prison had been killed, with her eye gouged out and missing from her head. One of my players thought it would be funny for the shock factor to stick his finger in the empty socket, with two town guards in the room. I thought it was funny, and the rest of the party was kinda laughing along, but for the sake of world consistency and the integrity of the setting I'm creating, I decided to give him a fine of two gold and five silver for tampering with a dead body. Again, in front of the guards. Ten minutes later, and he gave himself an excuse to leave the session, and the next day I sent a message to the group directed at no one in particular, not even referring to what he did as it wasn't the only thing on my mind at the time. I was just asking them to let me know what their expectations for the campaign were to allow me to more accurately suit the world to their expectations for the game. This player took that message personally and decided to start his own campaign, along with quitting the one I was running. We had a bit of a heated back and forth, and it turned out the reason he left was because he felt punished for trying to be funny, when I, in all honesty, only gave him the fine because doing something like that in front of the guards seemed like something that would reasonably result in some kind of repercussion. TLDR Player fingered an empty eye socket in front of town guards, I fined him 2.5 GP for it, and he got upset and quit the campaign. Yeah, I think that was a bit of an overreaction from that player. It would make sense for there to be some sort of repercussions for tampering with a dead body, especially in front of some guards. And it doesn't even sound like the DM or the other players were mad about it, it just made sense to give a fine to keep immersion up. I can only imagine how that player would act at a character death if this is how they act over a petty fine. Anyways, on to the next one. GM let Kevin play out his fantasy. By Reddit user, Thrife. Hey guys, after reading through some posts, I thought I'll share with you a gem that I just remembered again. All names are, of course, changed, and the story happened about six years ago, so I'll try my best to recall the events. Meet GM. He was my former roommate, who had a big faible for pen and paper in general. In fact, that's how we met in the first place, and decided to start a shared flat. GM had many interesting ideas, and constantly came up with other interesting scenarios, or found an interesting pen and paper to check out. We tried everything from vampires over to one-shots with interesting mechanics similar to D&D. GM also had another friend who he knew for a long time. For the sake of it, we will call him Kevin. Kevin lived up to that name. Wait, what's wrong with the name Kevin? He was a whole bunch of problems, but I'll just concentrate on the pen and paper bits. Otherwise, this story won't be fitting here anymore. No one really liked to play with Kevin anymore, except for GM. Kevin got kicked out of many parties for cheating, spoiling things, and just Kevinisms. In fact, I previously got a space in a full party due to him fucking up big time. A bit of a fast forward, GM one day came to me offering a new game, this time the Kingsmaker Saga from D&D. He already asked several people to join who all said yes, and also Kevin. Hesitantly, I accepted too after consulting with Jim another friend and invited player. Jim also knew about Kevin's antics, but we decided to give it one last chance to see if he can behave. We even talked with the GM to keep an eye on Kevin too. The day came closer to start, and we players began creating our characters, talking back and forth with the GM to best strategize 
what will be needed, and what works best. I created a drow rogue, complete with backstory. A lot of work went into her. I even went back to the drawing table to create an avatar after many years of not drawing anymore. Q Kevin The time we prepared to play for was some days after Christmas, and Kevin was several hundred euros richer, which he was gifted by his parents to buy his own PC, so he won't be leeching theirs anymore. 30 years old and neat, nothing else to say. He of course spent all of it on rule books regarding the upcoming campaign, almost spoiling everything in our group chat and plotting on creating his ultimate war machine, a centaur with one ultimate move, charge. Our GM was having none of it, telling him time and time again how it'll be a bad idea since the first year or so we will be in swampy terrain. Kevin will just not have any fun at all, and when Kevin has no fun, his Kevinisms show up so, he decided, after some days, and close to the beginning of the game, on a drow rogue. We didn't communicate with the other players who plays what, only between GM and player, but GM ranted thoroughly with me about Kevin's choices, so I knew the whole time what he was planning. I immediately told the GM to shut that thought down too. Too much work went into my character, a female drow, just to have another one, a male drow, with the same profession in the party even though it would have been interesting to see how the matriarch aspect played out, only if it wouldn't have been Kevin. In the end, it was another character change for Kevin. He still wanted to play an elf character, so he again went through all the books and created a summoner high elf. Fair enough. Finally, the first day arrived, and we had a great time. Kevin even behaved. This went on for several days until we had this fateful day when we had to clean up a thief camp. During our fight through the camp, we found out that the leader was a feared woman, a real badass painted by our GM. In the end, we captured her and brought her back to our base for interrogation. Sadly, the character with the highest charisma was Kevin Scrawny Elf, so he gladly took on the job. What Kevin then described still makes me shudder. He wasn't harsh, didn't use violence, per se, to make her talk. He was friendly. As creepily friendly as a mustache-wearing, hard-breathing Kevin in the corner of a woman's locker room would be. He started on trying to intimidate her, a hard-ass fighting woman versus a skinny elf, which didn't go well, so he resorted to bad cop, rapey cop. I'm not sure that's how that goes. Bad Cop would be his summon demon-like thing, while he tried the kind and understanding way by speaking softly, telling her she won't be harmed by the summon demon if she would just talk. After that didn't work, he became even friendlier by getting really close. He started with caressing her, brushing her hair, to which I started to give my GM many hard WTF looks, and it ended by Kevin undressing the thieves' boss. After that, I don't know what else happened, since the other players and I left the room to share our disgust in the kitchen, while these two played out their rape fantasy in the living room. Understandably, that was the end of that day and the campaign. We gave the GM the clear option of either dropping Kevin or we won't be back for the next round. Nothing came out of it, and the whole campaign just lost itself. All thanks to some sad, lonely person who couldn't keep his fantasies to himself. It's now, as I said, about six years in the past, and I left the flat about four years ago. I also have no idea what happened to these two. Who knows, maybe they play out their innermost fantasies to this day. Yeah, stopping that game was probably for the best. It should have been obvious to both Kevin and the DM that everyone else was uncomfortable with what was going on, when everyone else walked out into the kitchen. It does suck though, because it sounds like OP put a lot of work and care into making their character, only for the campaign to come crashing down as it did. Who knows, maybe OP could bring that character back into a different game that would be more fitting. But before we move on, if you are enjoying the video, please consider dropping it a like, as it really does help out a lot. And to help persuade you further, here is another Simba Mega Close-Up. Now, 
Let's get to today's last story. High school DM calls my first character OP and accuses me of cheating because he doesn't know how the game works. By Reddit user Galactic Neon Lime. So, I've always had a really vested interest in fantasy games my entire life, but somehow, D&D just kind of slipped my radar, mostly because I didn't have actual friends until high school. That gets into where this story goes, because my school started a gaming club, and I was all over that shit. Fast forward a bit, and it's me and roughly five to six other people that are pretty new to the game sitting at the table and working with our DM. We were playing 5e, which was pretty easy to grasp, in my case. I already knew what I wanted to play, because I had spent years working on a fantasy character outside of D&D that fit into the mold very well. I ended up playing a half-elf, Oath of Ancients Paladin, whose other half was orc, not human. It never came up in gameplay, it was just an aesthetic and lore choice. Things go fine for a while, and I enjoy the experience, but the DM becomes increasingly frustrated with my character, and begins to constantly question every action I make, or punish me for it. For example, in one RP scene, I stated before we took off on another quest that my character would do the stereotypical knight pointing his sword on a horse pose, but the DM made my character fall off his horse and into the mud. On another occasion, the DM was shocked at how high my hit bonus was for attacks and straight up accused me of cheating. I explained in detail how I got my modifiers and the DM was confused that proficiency bonus applied to attacks and then said that I specifically was no longer allowed to do that. Fine, whatever. I go along with it because I enjoy the new friends I've made, and I knew coming into this that D&D is kinda at the DM's mercy, for better or worse. That is until we're in combat again, and I go for my extra attack, as I just leveled up, and I pump smites into it. At this point, the DM brings everything to a halt, and demands an explanation for how I did everything. Once again, I give him the rundown on my two attacks and how smites work to show that I'm not cheating, but the DM is just over it now. He ends the combat half-heartedly by saying, Congratulations, you won. You kill all the goblins. I left the club shortly after this and started playing D&D online over Discord, which was most assuredly a better experience. I didn't really bother to keep in contact with the DM, but I still know quite a few of the other players from back then and stay in touch. Thankfully, D&D wasn't completely ruined for me, but I just don't understand stuff like this, man. I feel bad for anyone that played with this DM and had the game completely ruined for them because a guy couldn't bother to look in the player's handbook instead of arguing about the basic mechanics of attacking. Him accusing me of cheating is actually delirious because all he had to do was open one of the five players' handbooks at the table to prove himself wrong, but he instead chose to lash out and act like a child because of his toxic perception of how the game is supposed to be run. It definitely sounds like that this would probably be a first-time DM that went into the game with the mindset that it was the players versus the DM, but OP later stated in the comments of the post that this DM claimed to have run 3.5e and Pathfinder games before, which I would call into question. The DM taking away OP's weapon proficiency would have been a hard pass for me, and I would have left right there. It sucks that that was probably a bunch of players' first time experiencing D&D, and that the game probably turned them away from it. Though, thankfully, not in OP's case, as it sounds like they found some fun games to play in online, but that will do it for today's episode. As always, I appreciate all of you. And Alice has something to say. Until next time.